Hmm. 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 Why is this so different? What the hell is going on? Where is my bloom? Why does my fire not contain any bloom when I render with cycles, but it does when I do it with Eevee? Hello everybody and welcome to my newest video. This is a very quick video. It's all about showing you how to add some bloom, some glare, whatever you like to call it, in cycles. I know that some of you, especially the ones that are just starting out and have started to render with the, with the cycles, if you want to have any type of bloom or anything like that in your scene, you're going to, do, you're going to have to do some compositing after you finish your image or add the compositing node to ensure that all of your scenes, all of your frames basically, will contain that glare or bloom or whatever you've gone uh, around to using. Uh, Eevee on the other hand doesn't have this necessity, you can just have bloom in your scene directly, but obviously Eevee is not a physically uh, accurate renderer, not like Cycles is. Um, also, the scene that you're going to see in this video, it's up for download on my Patreon page if you'd like to experiment with. It's actually quite a nice scene, you can do quite a few things in it. Uh, overall, it's an interactive scene in which I have created some fire looking shaders for some meshes that are put together. It's got quite some interesting features. They're also featured in another video that was uh, posted on this um, channel. Uh, where you can learn how to make your own fire in Blender, but as I've said, you can just get this down, this this file, you can just download it, and then you can just toy around with it and understand how this was created. Now let's begin the tutorial. It's gonna be a quick one, so hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so like I've said to you guys, this is quite simple. Uh, we've got our scene open in here, and then I've also got uh, two renders sorted out. Uh, one of them, which is in slot one, is the EV render, and then pressing two on the keyboard takes us to slot two, where I've got the cycles render. Now we don't actually need to re-render this in order to go in the compositor and do any kind of work. So this is the, as I said, this is the render image that you can all actually see by going over into render and then view render. If you press render image, it will just render again and that will also uh, replace the render that you've got. Now over in here, we're just going to get a new window. Uh, so we're going to switch from the shader editor into the compositor. And this is what we'll, we're going to see in the compositor. Now, in case you don't see anything in here, again, this works whether or not you have Cycles or EV open, it doesn't really matter. But if you don't see anything in here, all you need to do is just press the use nodes uh, tick box over here and then the nodes will show up. Now, in your particular, when you open this the first time, you're only gonna have your rendered layers. You're not gonna have an, anything else. Uh, you know, you're, you're probably gonna have a viewer, a composite, but all of these are nodes that can just be added like any other node. So you can add the noise, you can add a glare, uh, this viewer and this composite. Now, what you want to do right now is you want to take your render layer image and then plug it into a denoise if you need to. If not, you can just plug it into a glare. So the denoise um, uh, node will be used in case you want to add some denoising in post-production, but if you already denoise the image like I did using optics, then you wouldn't really need to do that. But we're just gonna put our render layer into the glare. Uh, and then the glare will, will then go into the image. Now, you can see already that we now have um, a bloom effect that has just been added because we plugged in the glare. Um, so, very interestingly, you can also plug this into the um, viewer, which then obviously just shows you the render in the background, so you can see that as well. But we don't need to do that. Um, what we actually need is just to see it over here in the render. Um, as you can see, the EV render hasn't changed in any way, so the glare uh, actually, the glare node only affects the cycle render. So if I, uh, you know, go in here and then cut that out, um, I'm just going to have to plug the image back into the composite, otherwise I won't be able to see anything. As you can see, nothing actually has changed 
uh, over it here. Now, very interestingly, we can still see the glare on our um, even even well even in our our uh, um, cycles render and that's because we still have this glare active over here which is quite interesting if i cut off the image then we won't have that so as you can see this also works uh well actually i think it was a bug it no longer works now so i'm just going to plug this back in there so we can see our uh glow over on the cycles render now you've got a few options in the glare panel so you've got fog glow uh, which is the one for this uh, nice uh, bloom. Now you also got uh, ghosts, which will change the bloom, will make it look differently. And you have these options in here, how many iterations, as you can see what that does. You can obviously play with the color modules, the threshold, so if you decrease that threshold, you'll get a new result. If you increase it again, a different kind of result. You're gonna have to play around with these depending on the scene that you are going to render. So again, uh, if you go to streaks, then this is going to give you a different kind of, um, of um, bloom. So again, you can add more streaks, you can mix. There's, there's so many different options in here. And obviously, I don't know what each of them will do on your scene specifically. But you can play around with a lot of these settings and, and get a, a lot of different effects. As you can see now, I've just you know, made it sparkly. So that's completely different, isn't it? And then you've got uh, high streaks, medium streaks, or low streaks, which again will change the overall image. I would definitely go for a lower amount of streaks just because it seems to be taking a long time to render uh, this composite. Now, bear in mind, this is applied per image. So if you have a timeline of, let's say, 250 frames and you render that in cycles, and you add the glare to the compositor, then every frame will be will receive uh, a composite, a, a glare uh, treatment on it. If you don't do that, then obviously you're not, just not going to have your uh, bloom composite on over your actual image. So uh, we also got a simple star, which is you know obviously stars. But what most people will use is fog glow because that just gives it the uh, right amount of uh, you know, overall, as I said, overall, uh, the effect that you would want from it, specifically from fire. Um, so that's what you would actually get. Uh, again, you've got to play around with these settings and see what uh, best works for you. Um, you. I just wouldn't know, depending on the scene, as I've said. But you can actually download this scene and you can play around with the settings yourself. This is what you need to do in order to have um, a, bl a bloom effect on your scene. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please uh, leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you do. Uh, leave a comment as to what else you'd like to see. And again, go in onto my Patreon page and you can get this scene uh, with no real problems. It's very cheap. You can just get it and just use it for yourself. Uh, and then again, just, just learn a few things if you don't already know these things. But thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.